Hey y'all, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace and it's Monday night at eight o'clock. Thanks for showing up and watching what we have to do tonight. First, let me tell you, I am very sorry that last week's live was a little far away. Um, I do have the project we did last week so y'all can see it, uh, but we had we were had just finished the first day of boot camp. It was my first live in the new studio and I apologize for kind of working the kinks out. Um, I want y'all to see, this is the patina that we did last week. I have not touched it since we did it. And y'all can see, let me move this. Y'all can see this is with mermaid tail and this is with, uh, I put copper over it and then I used the green spray on it. And the bottom one is pine cone on this side and the other side we put iron patina paint with green spray. So just so y'all can see, this is just a shiny piece of metal. That's all it is. Um, nothing else was added. My base coats were these just to mimic the rust and the patina, and you can see how pretty it turned out. All right, so let me know where you're watching from, and also if you have a local retailer, please be sure to tag them because we all need a shout out, okay? All right, so first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you this. If you follow me on 44 Marketplace, you know I lost one of my precious Mastiffs a couple weeks ago. And this is my Amos. I received this in the mail today and it's absolutely fabulous. I put up the original picture of Amos with this beside it. All right, so let's get to it tonight. Tonight, what we're gonna do is we are going to go over how to age a finish quickly. A lot of people ask questions about how to age a finish and I could do it on a piece of furniture, but I'd rather y'all be able to see it up close and personal. And if I do a demo of it, you can see it even better than you can on a piece of furniture. So um, again, we're in the new studio. We still have a little echo. We're working on that. Sorry if I sound really loud, but I'm loud. There's no two ways about it. All right, so we're gonna learn how to do a finish like this. Now this is only two colors. This is Dixie Belle Blue and Coffee Bean. So I wanna show y'all how to do an aged finish quickly. We all want to work smarter, not harder, so that's what tonight is about. All right, so I, I started with, let me move my little thing. I started with a cabinet door, and you can see maybe how shiny it is. Um, it's just a laminate counter, a cabinet door that I picked up at um, a local thrift store or something. So what I did was I cleaned it really well with white lightning, and I put my first coat of paint on it. Now, when I am trying to get an aged finish, we want layers and layers and layers. So to get layers, rather than reinventing the wheel, I put what I call a half coat over it. If you'll notice, you can still see lightly in some places the original color of the door, which was kind of an off-white color, and I put Stormy Seas over that. I used a Dixie Belle Stormy Seas over that. Now, that has dried for a little while, not as long as I would have liked because I've been messing around at the new studio and shipping transfers and things like that. Um, also, if you have sensitive skin, be sure and wear gloves with what we're doing tonight. Um, I don't, but I am, uh, I got an errand to run after I finish this, so I am going to wear gloves. And you may not even be able to find gloves. These are my gloves that I like to do things with. All right, so we are going to pick another color to go over it. And I love Savannah Mist over it. And we may actually put two colors on this. So you can see we started with Stormy Seas. And I'm gonna turn y'all down so you can see what we're doing right quick. <coughs> Sorry, my allergies are killing me with all this pollen. All right, so. You can see we've got Stormy Seas on here, and what we're gonna do is we are going to take Savannah Mist, and we're not gonna go crazy with it, okay, y'all? We are going to just um, put some on here because we're looking for that aged finish. So we're just gonna, my brush is still damp from where I washed it out earlier. So we're gonna put this on here. We're not gonna go crazy with it. Um, I've got my Mr. Bottle over here. We are gonna have to have it. <laughs> I don't know if y'all live for a Mr. Bottle like I do, but oh my goodness, I love it. Now we just did this and I teach a three day furniture finishing boot camp, and we just did this in boot camp and everybody loved, loved, loved it. Uh, if you guys follow me, you know I'm in Eatonton, Georgia, and I teach three day furniture finishing boot camps. 
monthly, sometimes when we don't have COVID going on. Um, I've taught them in New Mexico. I've taught them several places, um, but I teach them in my classroom and we go over everything from furniture repair to raised stencils to pretty much whatever you want to go over. And this is one of the things we did. It's always fun to do something that you haven't done before. We go over glass bead gel, we go over patina, we, we spend a lot of time on furniture repair and sanding, we spray Dixie Bell paint. If you follow me, you know I'm all about some spraying up some Dixie Bell paint. All right, now you wanna make sure you get it a little bit in the places that you want it to be. And we don't wanna go crazy with the coat. All right, so you can see, I'm gonna turn you back up a little so y'all can watch this process. All right, spin you back up just a hair, okay? Hope I'm not making anybody sick. All right, now what we're gonna do is you can see that we have put a kind of coat on here. This is what I call like a half coat. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a vinegar mixture. Make sure if you're doing this now, um, people ask me what is the mixture. Uh, it might be 50-50, but it might be a little less water than vinegar. It depends on how quickly you wanna separate. And because I used to be a programmer, I love analytics. And this is one of those things, this is about chemistry. This vinegar and water is gonna make this separate, but then we're also gonna inject some salt in there, which adds a little bit of texture and it really helps it. Now keep in mind, you wanna have some plastic or some paper down when you do this. And it depends on how much separation you want. You can have a little bit of separation or you can have a lot of separation. All right, so now I'm gonna hold this up close so y'all can see. Can you see how it's starting to separate, right? Okay, it's starting to separate just a little bit on there and it's going to give it that look. Now, if you want it to be more linear, a lot of times if you're working on a vertical surface, you can lay the piece on its back so you don't get the runs down so that it just separates in place. But a lot of people like that drippy, drippy, drippy feeling and that's what I like on this. So hang on, let me grab my little paper towel over here. Um, they get mad about me using the salt at the uh, studio, but I don't care. Um, I'll get them another salt shaker. I'm gonna put some salt on this. Now, if you're doing it on a horizontal surface, it's easy. If you're doing it on a vertical surface, it's a little more difficult, but I'm gonna tell you, the salt combined with the vinegar helps it separate. Now, we're gonna inject a little bit more vinegar over that salt. Now, once it dries, you can sand the salt away if you want to, but I like the texture that it adds. Okay, now we're gonna put it back up so you can see. Can you see how it is beginning to separate? I don't wanna hold it out over my rug because that's why we have plastic on the table. You can see how it starts the separation process, especially when it is over. Now, I am just lightly misting. If you want heavy separation, the best thing to do is to put, a, put your little spray bottle on stream and it will cause great separation. Now, another thing to remember is if you can lay your piece on its back and add a little bit more salt, the salt really causes the separation. Another thing that is great to do is to put some uh, Dixie Bell Crackle. Dixie Bell Crackle adds great texture. Put some Dixie Bell Crackle on there, let it run through its process, and then do this over it, and then you'll have this falling away from the crackle. I'm gonna put just a little bit over this new salt that I added, and I'm gonna hold it back up so y'all can see it. Can y'all see how that is separating and it gives me that old world like it has been sitting out in the salt air for years. And the thing about it is, what the best thing to do, which I don't have the patience to do, leave it alone and let it run its course. You can add more to it so that you get, you add until you get the reaction that you're looking for, okay? And the thing that makes it great is you don't have to stop with one layer. What you do is you do it this way, you let it dry overnight and it'll dry and you'll lose all of the vinegar smell and everything like that. And then you can do it again tomorrow and do it with a different color. Add French linen, add um, coffee bean or something and put just a little bit of each color that you wanna add. Do your same process 
and it's amazing what it can do. And then let it run its course, and after it runs its course, then what you can do is you can go back in with your waxes, and if you want a little bit of shimmer and shine, now look how that is developing. It's one of those things that until you see it done, you don't realize how easy it is. It's very un-labor intensive. It's a great way to work smarter, not harder. So I'm gonna move this over so y'all can see it up close so we don't get it all over my rug because I want you to see it separating. All right, I'm gonna scoot you up close. Sorry if I'm making anybody sick, but I want y'all to see how it is separating. Can you see how it gives a whole different look to the paint? It's just a great way to give a really chippy looking finish and you've got nice definition in the edges and stuff. And it's up here, it's really good. I'm gonna scoot it over toward the edge. Can you see all of this up here? I'm gonna raise you back up just a hair. Can you see how great these edges look? Now I'm gonna dry it a little with the with our blow dryer. So hang tight, because I want you to see what it looks like as it dries a little. If y'all don't mind, I would appreciate y'all sprinkling it out a little so everybody can see how easy it is. I'm gonna turn this on, so if you don't wanna hear the noise. part because I want the rest of it to continue to process. All right, so can you see how beautiful the finish is up there at the top? Now you can work with it and you can develop it whatever you want. Keep in mind, if you have raised panels like this does, you may have to get a little paper towel and get some of this that's in the crevice and if you're in a hurry for it to dry, you may have to get some of that in the crevice out just because it's gonna take a while to dry if you're in a hurry. If you're not in a hurry, leave it sitting overnight and I'm telling you, it dries beautifully. You don't end up with any of the vinegar smell. And keep in mind, you don't want the vinegar in a mister bottle. You want it in a spray bottle where you can adjust the spray because if you do a more direct full-on spray, it separates faster. But if you do a light mist, then you can control it a little bit more and you can separate it. And I'm telling you, if the colors have good contrast, like these do, you can see how it bleeds through in little places. And it's one of those ways to end up with an aged piece of furniture very quickly. So you can take MDF furniture. If you've never tried Dixie Bell paint, Dixie Bell paint clean well with white lightning and paint it in most cases. If it's a laminate, you may need slick stick, but you can go over it with this. And it just gives the illusion that you've got a, a really old, crusty, dusty piece of furniture. And if you follow me at 44 Marketplace, you know I love all things crusty and rusty. And I'll tell you something that's great to add to this finish, Dixie Belle Patina like we did last week. And I, it really makes a huge difference. So I wanted y'all to see how quick and easy it is to do this. And I'm telling you, if you're doing a large piece of furniture, you may wanna do one panel at a time because it's much easier if you can lay it on its back or whatever. Now you can work a vertical surface. Um, just throw the salt on it. I know that sounds silly, but just throw the salt up there. But it's great if you're working on a dresser or a sideboard or a hutch or something like that, if you can lay it on its back. But again, either work in an area where you don't have to worry about killing the grass with the vinegar and the salt or put some plastic down is the best thing to do. Put you some plastic down and you're going to get a great finish with just a, some vinegar. Um, and I don't like to use apple cider vinegar. I like white vinegar when I use it because sometimes the apple cider vinegar can stain what you're doing, especially if you're doing something like this. But also keep in mind when you're doing something like this, if I'm laying it on its back now and I decide to do it like this, it's gonna have kind of a weird pattern to it. If you are going to allow it to drip, make sure that it's dripping the way that you want it to. So if you're gonna sit it back up, make sure it's sitting upright and it's not sitting on its side or whatever because the other thing you have to be conscious of is the drip pattern. 
So be mindful when you paint it, you know what direction you're painting. Be mindful when you spray your uh, vinegar and water solution on there and you add your salt that you know which way the pattern is running. Now, I would want my display to be displayed like this rather than this because my pattern would be off. So, I hope that has helped you learn a quick way to age a finish and it works with all of the Dixie Belle paint colors and it is a great way to uh, add some interest to your piece. Not only that, you can go back in with some Dixie Belle wax and Dixie dirt and add even more texture. Like I say, you can put crackle underneath this and it adds even more texture. It's unbelievable. And another thing to keep in mind is when you get ready to top coat this, Dixie Belle does not require a top coat, but if you do want to top coat it, throw some Dixie Belle flat clear coat over the top of it. It will be fabulous. It will retain that aged finish, but your finish will be protected from grandkids and mastiffs like I have at my house. All right, so I hope that has been helpful. If you have questions, put them in the comments. I will go back and answer every single one of them when I finish up with my appointment after this. And if there's ever anything I can do for you, let me know. I am Pam with 44 Marketplace, and I love all things Dixie Belle. Thanks for watching tonight, and I'll see you next Monday night right here at 8 p.m. And please be sure and follow me at 44 Marketplace. If you're watching this in replay, please hashtag replay so I know you checked in with me. Bye, y'all.